Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkter. Uh, today we're going to talk about the EQ. We're going to use one of my songs here. Let's give it a listen real quick. Now, um, this may have happened to you before. Uh, perhaps you're working with an instrument or a uh, set of vocals, and no matter how high, no matter how loud you make them, it seems to be that it's either drowning out the other music or the other music is drowning out it. There's a reason for that. We're going to talk about ways to get around it. We're going to talk about why it happens. Now let's listen to this. You've probably noticed that I get very hard to understand right about now. You probably can't understand me at all. You probably have a hard time hearing me unless I'm yelling really loudly. But I don't want to have to yell. So I'm going to cut that down. Any idea why that happened? Well, the reason is because most human vocal frequencies tend to fall within this bell curve right here between say about 500 hertz on the low side and 2 kilohertz right here so this shape right here pretty much represents the curve the, of the spectrum that vocals regardless of whether you're male or female maybe a you know a few here a few hertz up for females and um, pretty much everybody except Isaac Hayes is going to fall within this range right here sorry so, uh, what we're doing is if we boost the music in that particular frequency, vocals tend to get crowded out. We could say that they're in competition with the music. I think that's a good way to, to listen or a good way to evaluate it. When you have two sounds that are in competition with each other, um, you can either try to boost the volume of one or you can try to EQ them. You might even... Um, be able to get away with uh, certain degrees of stereo panning if that's the route you want to take but that's not always reliable and it doesn't always sound as good um, I'm going to talk about using an EQ in, a, in several different ways one of the ways to use the EQ is to sort of shape your room dynamics um, I can adjust the bass I can give the entire track sort of a bass boost and that might be good for dancing whatever more treble if, if, if the speakers that we're listening to the music on don't have enough treble or if um, if the sound is not coming through clear enough you might be able to correct that by doing sort of a general treble adjustment and of course um, if people really want to dance you can crank up the, the midsection sort of uh, you know make that music just really fill fill their eardrums <laughs> Back in my uh, DJ days, um, I noticed that um, most of the parties I was at, people didn't really want to dance all the time. They just wanted to sit around, have a few drinks, have a good time. And what I would do is I would I had these three knobs on my mixer for bass, mid, mid, and treble, and I would just cut the mid, turn it down all the way, and that would still make the music sound powerful. It still sounds like the song that you're expecting, but um, people are still able to listen and talk at the same time they don't have to shout which is what I had to do in the beginning I was demonstrating what happens when you crank up that EQ in the midsection all of a sudden everybody has a hard time hearing each other so these are oops these are some of the general ways that you can uh, use things like the equalizer to sort of uh, shape your overall sound let's look at a way to shape your specific instruments here now this part of the song let me make a loop real quick this part of the song has got both a guitar and a piano and the, they're in competition with each other and what happens at this particular range in the song is they sort of tend to collide now I've got a very nice guitar pattern here this uh, solo um, I like it a lot but I'm finding that the piano drowns it out so um, we're going to use the EQ to give each of these instruments some breathing room and this is how you do it. I'm going to use the M class for the guitar and the 2 band for the piano. Let's listen to it and um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use uh, this EQ to highlight this frequency range right here. This is the higher mid range and likewise what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those same frequencies um, with the piano EQ. So let's listen. That sounds 
sounds all right. I uh, I think the piano is missing out a little bit on um, on some of those frequencies, so I'm going to use a narrower band here. <laughs> Actually, now that we've adjusted these frequencies, I can come back here and um, crank up the volume a little bit louder. Okay, now you may have noticed that even though the piano sounds about the same volume and the guitar sounds pretty much the same volume, now we can really hear that guitar. It's really coming through in, the, in those high, high ranges. Likewise, the piano is giving it some breathing room right there. Now, let's see if we can find a suitable range of the piano um, frequencies to boost, to make that piano come through maybe a, a bit warmer, maybe a bit fatter. <laughs> Both of these frequency bands sort of correspond with each other. I'm boosting one where I'm cutting the other. And in that way, we can give each other, or these instruments can give each other some breathing room and allow themselves to come through. Um, let's also take a listen to some of the effects you can do with an equalizer. Keep in mind that all of these knobs can be automated. All right, um, you know what? I'll bypass this for now and I'll create a new EQ. Same thing. Uh, just because I don't want to lose that those settings. We're going to work with the parametrics. Um, incidentally, I should mention that the, these three knobs are pretty much the same on every software program I've seen them on. Frequency selector, the gain amount, and the bandwidth. It's this right here. Uh, whether you're using Reactor, Fruity Loops, Cubase, whatever, you probably have a parametric EQ that functions much the same way. So let's listen to this. We're going we're gonna to highlight one particular spike. <laughs> very loud either. If we do it on the main mastering suite, you'll hear the difference. Uh, it's it's pretty pr pretty pronounced. And what we're going to do is, like I said, we're just going to highlight one particular frequency band and listen to it. So, uh, that sounds a bit too AM radio spacey. It's not very useful for this particular song but uh, that is the type of effect you can get. It's very similar to a high resonance filter. If I turn the bandwidth down, however, this will almost sound like a wah pedal. So in this way, in this way we can get a number of different effects out of the equalizer. Keep in mind, for this purpose, that the M class does not have any CV inputs, whereas our two-band parametric has one for each frequency selector. And that will have the effect of moving this knob up and down in whatever rhythm you choose uh, based on the LFO or an envelope that you send to it. Um, those are pretty much uh, the basics. That's uh, the, the majority of the functions that you use an equalizer for. Use it to shape your sound, to sort of boost other frequencies. The brain is very good at picking out those frequencies. So by highlighting one and cutting another, you can make two instruments stand out very clearly against each other, even if they sound very similar otherwise. Um, one last note about uh, using the parametrics. It's best if you cut low frequencies or rather, how should I say this? If you cut with a narrow bandwidth, um, it's almost unnoticeable, and that's a good thing. If you boost, make sure you use a wider band, otherwise people are going to be able to pick out that, that resonance. It's going to sound unnatural. So boost wide and cut narrow. Um, and that will allow you to get a very subtle effect that's both natural, believable, and it won't, it won't change the shape of your sound so much that a guitar does not know.